So we're doing the fixed axes first. We've just been doing a whole lot of technology stuff, haven't we? So let's start with Aquarius, because Aquarius goes with the technology. Um, so we're just going to do a couple of these, and then we're just going to pick them out of the pack. So that we will start with Ophiuchus, but we'll start with your Ophiuchus once all the cards have gone down. And Ophiuchus will be the top opening and the bottom closing once all the cards have gone down. So, so that's the top and that's the bottom. So we've got Aquarius. It really is a whole other interesting game doing this alignment stuff. And what we discovered last time was it was different looking at the patterns in the camera. Um, are we going straight to the opposite then? You want to, we can't do the blind spot pattern because that doesn't stick to the same axes. Yes, okay. Oh, Aquarius, Leo. Which one now? Taurus or Scorpio? Titomo. Okay, so this fire and Scorpio, so Scorpio, Taurus. Oh, yeah, it fits. So, starting with Aquarius up here, 24. Diag. Um, and it's got like that egg timer symbol on its side. We were talking about the funneling out and we were talking about the center. So for us, rather than being like English or Western and reading left to right, or is it the Japanese that reads back, or Chinese that reads backwards from right to left, and the right the Japanese or reads and writes, and the Japanese reads down. So rather than any of them, we just go from the center. So for us, numbers um, like six, eight, six, we would be from the center, be like whether well, it's eighty-six and eighty-six. Or you can be from the outside in 68 and 68, but we start from the centre rather than from the outside. Uh, we were talking about the centre earlier, the galactic centre in the galaxy, but also the centre weaving the Celtic knot into the centre of the body. Um, it's starting off with daylight, and we were also talking about the extreme oscillations between like the northern and southern hemisphere, where you um, up in like Norway, Sweden. Is it Norway and Sweden? Um, definitely Sweden, that you get the sun right at the very north for two months. You get solid sun in summer. In winter, you get solid nighttime. Um, so for us, that's talking about the, the waves, the extremes. So if we are going to experience intense highs and intense joys and gratitudes, there will be the other end of that of those experiences sometimes as well. What goes up must come down. Um, and in a way, what goes down must come up as well, because if you think about water, water flows with gravity, but depending on the temperature, um, it evaporates. Um, and even if the temperature just gets really, keeps getting colder and keeps getting colder and keeps getting colder, there will come at some point in time, a rise in temperature as we see 22, 44, when, the snow and the ice will start melting and evaporating. 22 is the number of intuition, the master, one of the numbers on this um, pyramid of enlightenment, um, which is the master builder number. Um, we talk about the future and the all at room. We're building the future. You're building the future. You're building the creation individually with each of your individual projections. But as a collective of humanity and a global nation, we are building the future. We are building our future. We are building a global, a global harmonic nation, which consists of a huge diversity of individual belief systems, where you have the opposite, the dark and the light merging together. Daylight defines our world, splitting all into the illuminated and its shadows. Daylight holds no judgment, it just shines, treating it nothing kinder or harsher. 
daylight dawns and dies down daily. A rolling rhythm, unremitting, greeting the moon as dusk, drops and descends. Daylight still illuminates shadows purged by the moon's reflective face. Everything endlessly tripping the light fantastic. So where is the Aquarius in your chart? What house is it in? Because daily is coming up a lot here. So, and it's number 24. On an expansive perspective, 24 equals to six. Six is the home house of Virgo. Virgo is about daily routines and daily habits. Because it's an expansive number, it's daily routines and daily habits um, around holistic health and well-being that will expand one's future into the equilibrium where there is sensory feelings of enjoyment, but without the extreme oscillations of the ups and the downs, there's a, a calibration and equilibrium. Shadows, seeing the joy in the shadows, because the new perspectives and the new daily routines have, and it's not daily routines in a logical linear sense of get up at eight o'clock every day, it's more, it's more talking about the season. It's more talking about the, the cycles of the sun. So rather than getting up at 8 o'clock every day, getting up at sunrise every day, this will depend around your work lifestyle and other things. But having understanding that the nature seasons and cycles has this ebb and flow where it's lighter later in winter than in summer, and that one's own lifestyle reflects and mirrors that, that also accommodates their own, their own um, individual unique lifestyles around with work and family and kids and own routines. So it's, it's topping up your routine, if you have routines already, from a linear logical into a more abstract circular system routine. And if you don't have routines already and you're pre completely out there in the chaos, then going into the circular system, seasonal, routines um and living by moon cycles more as well so leo's come up a lot again here leo's come up down there this is talking about shining um leo's about shining one's light so embracing one's leo qualities so what's the triangulation between aquarius leo and virgo in your chart what are the planets there? What are the numbers? And what do they personally say to you with when and if you don't know and they're not speaking to you, when you go to sleep at night, do the reprogramming. Um, or just say we would like to be guided to have some sense of clarity and understanding around these numbers. Are there numbers? Uh, are there any kind of clarity or answers in the numbers? or the astro energetics or the houses or the planets that we can kind of put together to give us clarity. And the next card is Leo, talking about Leo on the axes. Hi Leo, how are you doing? And we have jumped from 24, which we expanded up to six on the Tesla code, which is the point of balance on the Tesla code, in Aquarian energies of your chart, going into 36, going into a full Tesla code of the circular system, the unseen energetics. Um, and we've got one, two, we've got four, we've got the addition cross and we've got the diagonal cross and the central wheel as well. Helm of War, wheel, shield. So in Celtic astrology, you have the, what's it called, the wheel of seasons, the seasonal wheel. Um, when you, no, you don't really, uh, chakra is um, Sanskrit for wheel, your wheel of energy. A linear masculine perspective, squares don't roll. 
Squares can cause a, you can't cycle on a bike with square wheels, it doesn't create a rhythm, whereas circles do. So embracing more circles in your life, whatever that means may mean for you. It could be wearing circular clothes with circular patterning on. It could be eating circular food. I held you chop your carrots, you chop your carrots into sticks or circles. Could we just chopped loads of carrots today and then be chopped in circles? Well, there's a circle just up here. And you have your orbs as well. Or inspired ancestral collective magic. A smoke screen to surround and shield us. Everyday fears are drawn back, dissipating as ancient marinas wrap us up and tuck us in. A still sea doesn't make a seasoned sailor. Therein is the danger and the addiction. Facing fears and the lone battles of a shamanic voyage strengthens you. The best shield is posted in your own confidence. Lose your footing and we all do. Agis Shalman, here to soothe you. So your own confidence, Leo, shining. Leo is about confidence. The Leo card in the traditional rider weight is number eight, which is about strength. Or it's number 11. What does number we just had? Oh, we're going to go there. Uh, but we just had a... A thing of energy shift so there may be something there in those energies in that kind of energy shift um what can you do to strengthen and develop your confidence where are your leo energies in there do you resonate more with an 11 or an 8 whichever one you resonate more with in a harmonic way um what can you do to make friends with and resonate more with the one that you don't that you resonate with in a dissonant way What soothes you? What can you do? What what do you do that soothes you? What brings you awe? We heard a lovely quote the other day, not that we can remember who it's from. I think it was Heather Ensworth that said it, but that she said that awe was the source of wisdom. When you've got that child state, wow, in in awe, wide-eyed, that is the source of wisdom. And it's always by ancestral collective magic. So the deeper one goes into one's self, into their heart, into the deepest core of their being, the heart centre, their heart centre down, two fingers below your navel, um, and your third eye centre, you've got that triangulation going on. If you tap into those childlike energies, how does your body want to be? How does your body want to move to shift energy about and to activate ancestral codes in your genetic blueprint um scorpio wasn't it earth grip return eld grab 29 so 29 adds up to 11 we were just talking about the 8 and the 11 in Leo with the strength card. Thrice burned, thrice returned, famed and renamed. Forgotten, yet recalled by Odin from her graveled realm. Or border, old one in her ironwood grave. He asked this, it and seer, how the Gullivag cheated death. He listened but did not hear. You might cheat your past and rise. Craft another future and rise. But the now will eventually find you. Our vessels are from the earth and they will be returned there. So this is talking about the life cycle, birth, death rebirth metaphys metaphysically metaphorically but also literally um so speaking of it as food and composting your food's waste which then produces the soil and the nutrients for the next lot of food to grow understanding that our consciousness 
the God particle, the God that resides in all of us. Um, one, some of us know the difference between soul and spirit. Um, think souls are individual energetic makeup that then gets infused with the body. So it's like if you've got like um, transparent plastic paper and you can have a picture on one and then another picture on the top and another picture on the top, it's like that. One's like the body denser energy and structure and the next one's like the energetic and the energetic doesn't need the body, but the body does need the energetic. And so our consciousness can feel like it's just the body unless it has any experiences or knowledge otherwise but there is the, the, the mass awakening that started happening in 2012 and there's going to be more rounds of it now as well that is happening so we're understanding that we're not just our body but at the same time people are looking to our out of body experiences but we feel it's more, more about but it's different for everyone but for us it's more about having out of body experiences in the body so that we can hold on to those memories, hold on to those frequencies and compress them and manifest them into the physical. So rather than going on a higher level, which is kind of a perceived thing from the, the, the reality we're in, the 3D reality, and wanting to go to higher levels, it's about actually going to the lower levels, understanding the higher levels through the lower densities. And that's how we create heaven on earth. Um, we're not being overly great with it. So this is Scorpio. Scorpio is water sign, but also got the sting, got the fire. So it is the water and the fire. Um, but decompositions happen, which we learned that um, we had a physical, tangible experience in the Burning Man Festival, is you don't want too much. You don't want loads of water. If there's too much water, then you end up getting like unhealth, um, non-beneficial bacteria and it gets stagnant and wet and moist. So for a compost heap to really work, there needs to be a certain amount of water, a certain amount of oxygen, a certain temperature. What is the other thing we're going to say? And a certain amount of balance between carbon and nitrogen the carbon being the dead products like your dead leaves and your dead plants um and your nitrogen being products that have the still got life force energy in them like your fruit and veg that you've eaten and you cooked um um the bits that you didn't eat and you didn't cook that are left over that's more like your nitrogen it's got more nitrogen in it it's not had gone it's not completely dead like leaves that have fallen off the tree and it needs to be a balance between the dead and the alive the, the carbon and the nitrogen so Scorpio is related to the pelvis as well. Decomposition of the body happens. That's all the processing that happens in your intestines and your guts. Um, activated charcoal is something that we do and that we have to help purify the body and get rid of toxins. But getting your hands in Mother Earth, getting your hands in Mother Earth, feeling for the bacteria, being present when you've got your hands in Mother Earth and the soil. And if you, you know, maybe start a garden if you've got space for it, or maybe start a little plant pot garden in your house if you haven't got space for it. Somehow connect um, to Earth and grow something. And be present with that and establish patience and witnessing and watching observation um, and connecting into time. And that we are nature, our bodies, our human bodies, that is nature. So when we connect into nature, we can connect into nature, our body, we can connect into nature outside with the plants and um, the elements going out in all elements like when we went out walking backwards today for the first time in ages it was raining and it was horrible um i don't think that was that i think that was yesterday we don't remember now 
this time's a, a funny illusion. But um, there was a blackbird, our little ones, it was really funny, there was a blackbird outside. And it was started getting our blueberries off the blueberry tree, and suddenly our little ones up going, There are blueberries! And it's like, Well, you have to harvest them, otherwise, the blackbird's going to have them. And so then they went out in the rain and started harvesting them. So I think we're walking backwards in the rain was yesterday. So embracing all the elements and getting dressed up in waterproofs and get outside, understanding that the body is nature and that we can connect in through a wooden table, a wooden shelf a glass of water, even if we're in the most modern of house, there's some form of nature around us, even if that's just us and our body. And automatically these patterns here, look at this whirling sound, whirling rain coming down here and then coming into this. And that's just, it's amazing how these cars just end up. So you've got the white here coming down and then it kind of splits off into two down there but it looked better down here and even these actually yeah that kind of works better so where that curve goes down there goes with that angle bit up here So you're ignoring the colours and you're just looking at the contrast of light and dark and seeing how the alignment adds, how, how it aligns up. Colour therapy. Patternology therapy. And we've gone from browns and whites. We've still got some browns here but into just like browns and whites and creams into just browns. And the patternology, this is very circulated and got a pattern, a symmetry to it. This has got a symmetry to it, but more of a, a linear rather than a whole symmetry. And this one's kind of like top heavy or bottom heavy or side heavy. The balance isn't there, but that would be expected. There's not going to be balance there if you're at the start of your life cycle or if you're at the end of your life cycle. It's only when you're in the middle of your life cycle, really, where there's kind of balance in a way. And yet one has the midlife crisis. We're just getting a bit cold. Can put our top on again. Except our stool sitting on it. So we're starting to get cold again then. So we've gone from Leo fire into Scorpio water. Water can get cold. The further out you go in the water and the further down you go in the water, it's cooler. Is there too much water in your system? Okay, Scorpius, so now we're going to go on to Taurus. Hi, Taurus. Dito Momo. This is exactly the same card as Taurus the last week. And we've been using these cards. So we're talking about the daylight shining on the fixed axes. Daylight shining, the rhythm of the cycle, candle, candle, your day star is Taurus. Your day star is Venus as well. Venus is the ruler of Taurus. Venus is also the ruler of Libra. The axis is moving from Taurus into Libra. Where's your Venus in your chart? For us, our Venus is in Aries. Um, in the Western astrology, it's in Taurus. Um, no, it's in Pisces in the Vedic astrology. So we're talking about, and plus 24 of the card of Aquarius, this is 42. So we've got the mirror going on. So what's going on between Taurus and Aquarius for you? And those energies. Taurus is the throat chakra, um, ruler of the throat and the voice. Aquarius is your calves and your ankles. 
there might be energetic threads and connections connecting, weaving, sewing together in your body between them. The day star, the shining, the Leo energies again. How does Leo and Taurus connect in your energies? What about Elias, Taurus, Aquarius? What patterns are they making? The opposite axes of Taurus, you've got all the browns over here. We were talking about being top heavy in the Scorpio card here, whereas now it kind of moves its way across more into the middle. So Scorpio energy, your Scorpio energies were kind of out of balance, but they're starting to be brought into balance with Taurus, with your strength, with your, not your stubborn, because stubborn can be termed as a derogatory negative terminology, with your determined energies, with your perseverance with your keep on going, with your ability to use words like keep on going over don't give up, because keep on going are positive connotation, vibrations, words, wonderful for manifestation. Never give up um, doesn't have words in it suitable for manifestation. This was looking like an eye of an eagle last time, we remember, but now it's lurking, looking like a, a ball of water. A water, a ball of water droplet. It's all look, also looking like one of those zoom in things where you get a zoom in circle and you can see into it further, deeper. There's a man with an arm up here, reaching out. Do you need to do some stretching arm stretching exercises? This looks like a horse. What does horse mean for you? We were talking about the Knight of Swords earlier and the Knight. We've got a balance of the cold and the warmth, the snow, the fire. It's a candle, 42, candle, day star. Candel and condel, hod and baudir, the micro, the macro, two locks on one door, two flames, not the same, but lit from one match. The mortal lighted in Midgard burns as a candle here, yet blazes a mortal at ether there. We guard our delicate light from being blown out again and again and again. Know you are eternally ignited. Two Alvin keys are required to unlock the door back to there. Trust your flickering wick holds your flame pale and sure. Key. Where did it say key? Chiron. What's going on for Chiron in your chart? The symbology for Chiron is a key. Two locks on one door. So it doesn't say a key, it's got the lock. Oh yeah, two Alvin keys. So what's your Chiron? Do you have any pattern in your chart that looks like a door? Any of the aspect ratios? The micro and the macro is going on again. We heard someone else use this recently talking about, I think they were talking about the micro being like the subjective and the macro being the objective. We couldn't fully 
but um, we've still got to watch that more. So we just feel like this is embracing all of the elemental forces of nature rather than Scorpio, your op opposite axes is more focused on just the earth, na na the earth energetics. Whereas you've definitely got fire in yours, which is good because we need more fire. We are getting a bit slow, and steady. Taurus likes um, slow steadiness. So. That was the fixed axes. Now we're going on to the mutable axes, and it's Sagittarius. So hello, Sagittarius. How you doing? The pack was upside down, wasn't it? Yeah, because they're all going to be upside down. Treadow, 31, Soul Prince. Barefoot, barefoot. Some barefoot walking. Oh, that's really interesting. Look, so we were drawn to look at the underside of this packet, see if they were upside down or not, because these are all upside down. But we were drawn to do that when the symbology of the cards are pretty much the same. So they're basically the same, which has got a different angle coming out. So for us, this is how symbols draw us together. This is the expansion, 3 plus 1 equals 4. This is the subtraction, 6 minus 2 equals 4. And there's that 4 number again, the number 4 from the 40 of the all runes. So 4 is the emperor. 